Land Commissioner George P. Bush is one of three well-known Republicans running in the March primary to unseat the sitting Attorney General Ken Paxton. The other candidates are Congressman Louis Gohmert from East Texas and Eva Guzman, the former state Supreme Court Justice. It's an unusual situation, but Paxton is an unusual incumbent. He's had a legal cloud over him since shortly after he first took office in 2015. He was indicted then on securities fraud charges and is still fighting the case to this day. And then last year, he came under FBI investigation over allegations by his former top deputies that he abused his office to help a wealthy donor. He's denied wrongdoing in both cases, and he's forging ahead in a primary that may be one of the most interesting and contentious on the March ballot. We spent January on the campaign trail for this race. We learned a lot about how Paxton's challengers are positioning themselves and how he plans to hang on for another term. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is leading the fight to force Joe Biden and the liberal Democrats to follow the rule of law instead of infringing on our rights. Paxton is running on his record of suing President Joe Biden, challenging administration policies on issues including immigration, border security, and COVID-19 vaccine mandates. And Paxton says he's not done yet. The 27 lawsuits that Texas filed against Biden in my, 27, uh, in my first 27 months actually pales in comparison to what we're fighting now. It's, it's twice as aggressive at least. Uh, there's a complete disregard for the Constitution. When Donald Trump was president, Paxton was among the most pro-Trump attorneys general in the country. He is perhaps best known for filing a lawsuit that challenged Trump's re-election loss in four battleground states. The lawsuit was unsuccessful, but it cemented Paxton's loyalty to the former president, and Trump endorsed Paxton for re-election early on in the cycle. An attorney general who has really led the way, somebody who has been brave and strong, Ken Paxton. Ken. Paxton's challengers were undeterred by Trump's choice in the race. They say Paxton, with all his ethical baggage, lacks the integrity to be the state's top law enforcement official and potentially risks the office for Republicans in the general election. We're going to take on accountability in your government. This is the actual agency that's entrusted with that, whether it's taking on DAs or public integrity cases uh, throughout the state of Texas. But we can't do that with an indicted felon at the top of the ticket, at the top of the chain of command. What do you think of the incumbent, Ken Paxton? How, how has he done in office? <sighs> that's a rough question. He's a... Uh... Ken Paxton is better than a Democrat, but not somebody I would vote for us. If it was him against a Democrat, I would vote, but I would vote for anyone else in this race besides him. Is it just because of the ethical or legal issues? The ethical was a huge thing for me. Like, he's attorney general. If a politician breaks, becomes a felon, I don't like them, but I can still have an open mind. He is literally supposed to be enforcing the law. But Paxton's challengers know that railing against his legal problems alone isn't a winning strategy. That's why they're also trying to present themselves as credible alternatives to Paxton when it comes to issues that primary voters care about, like the border and election security. Politicians talk while illegals flood our borders. Bush in particular has tried to show he'll be just as tough on the border as Paxton, if not more. He went on a four-day tour of border cities in December, and my colleague, James Berrigan, joined him. So on this border tour, Bush really tried to hit hard that he would be the strongest on border security. He was out there surrounded by Border Patrol Union members. Uh, they were at his every stop. They spoke in, uh, in his press conferences. We also visited the Trump Wall, um, which Bush said needs to be completed. And he also stopped by some of the state fencing that the state has put up. The state is trying to build a border wall as well. Um, and he really touted the state's efforts um, in trying to sort of beef up the security. And he even walked us to some ranchers and farmers and houses where he said there's migrants coming through those properties and said that's the importance of the border security measures that the state is taking. Gomert is a wild card in the race. He was the latest to enter and he may pose the most direct threat to peeling away Paxton's voters. In January, Paxton's campaign started paying real attention to Gomert, concentrating its TV ads in his East Texas congressional district and attacking him with mailers and online ads. I think there's only one reason he would come after me, and that is uh, that he thinks I'm a threat to his getting a third term. And uh, I believe he's right on that. We can agree on that. Notably, Gomert has sought to undermine Paxton's most prized possession in the primary, Trump's endorsement. 
but he called me right after I announced, and he said, hey, I was told you were definitely not running. I said, well, it didn't come from me. And he had already told me, actually called him three or four times a week for many weeks trying to get him to endorse. Bush also competed for Trump's endorsement. For him, the race is partly a test of his family's political brand after its most famous members resisted Trump's election in 2016. But George P. Bush broke with his family that year and endorsed Trump, and his supporters in this race say he's carved his own path in politics. Well, I think you have to look at Commissioner Bush separate from his uncle, and separate from his father, and separate from his grandfather. I mean, he's his own man. Uh, yeah, of course, people think, well, you have a Bush, the Bush fatigue. But I don't think it's there. I think, I think they see him as young. I think they see him as upcoming. I think they see him a little more conservative, probably. Guzman is running as the most qualified and experienced candidate, pointing to her long legal resume as a lawyer and judge at multiple levels. And when it comes to that, she hasn't shied away from a direct contrast with Bush. Lawyers need to bring experience, and that means being in the courtroom. You can't win in the courtroom if you haven't set foot in the courtroom like George P. Bush. He didn't have a law license for the last 10 years. He let it go inactive. Bush does have a law license, but he classified it as inactive from 2010 until 2020. He's downplayed it all as a formality, saying he first made the license inactive because he deployed to Afghanistan, and then later kept it inactive because he was leading the General Land Office, which has its own lawyers. While Trump has endorsed Paxton, other major Republican endorsements have otherwise been limited. Governor Greg Abbott has spoken positively of his working relationship with Paxton, but has not offered a formal endorsement yet. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, who was a key backer of Paxton's first run for Attorney General in 2014, says he's staying out of this one. Ken is a good friend. Uh, there are a number of good friends who are running in this race, uh, who have been supporters, who have been conservatives, who have been stalwarts. And I trust the voters of Texas to make their choices. Two polls came out toward the end of January that showed it's possible Paxton is forced into a runoff but the polling was less clear who he would face in that runoff. Five Democrats are running for attorney general, also emboldened by Paxton's legal issues. But for now, the action is in the Republican primary, where in just less than a month, Paxton will learn whether Republicans are ready to renominate him. Ken, brave and strong and popular. Thank you very much, Ken.